So Liverpool have completed the season-long loan signing of Arthur Mello, but if you want to know more of how that deal came about and what the general Liverpool thinking is, I spoke to Neil Jones from Goal.com and this week's Jano Insight. Here's a section from that. We awoke to the news <laughs> to the way here. Um, on deadline day that Liverpool were looking to secure a loan deal for Arthur Mello. Um, it's a it's pure Liverpool in it, but it's not. I mean, it's the most. It's like an almost least Liverpool thing, but done in the most Liverpool way possible. Like, where does this name come from? You know, from out of nowhere, there's been probably a, half a dozen that you would expect Liverpool to be linked with. I forgot this guy had even existed up until hearing his name this morning. Yeah, completely agree. Um, I mean, it was like my Juventus colleague actually messaged me. He said, Arthur Mello to Liverpool, pretty much a done deal. Like, what? You know, like, <laughs> thanks. Um, it's... I I don't know whether it's completely down to the Henderson injury. I, I did say to someone last night, I got the impression that I just said there before earlier, Jürgen dropped in that Jordan has done his hamstring. Maybe there was an element of look, Jordan's done his hamstring. You know, like we're not we're not gonna just sort of let this pass by. Um, I suppose we look at positives and negatives if you want of the player. I mean, positives. He's a midfielder. <laughs> he's yes. he's twenty six, so he's not he's not a child. He's not past it in terms of age wise he's played at good clubs he's played at Barcelona he's played at Juventus they both saw fit to sign him for whatever reason he's played for Brazil 20 odd caps for Brazil so he's of a level he's clearly comfortable playing at a high level or has been um, he's fit and available for now which is I mean that, that is probably should have been the first thing I said yes you know. um, and he and he's <laughs> He, I've seen I've seen a lot of people doing the style comparisons. I don't I could I couldn't come in and say well he plays like this and he does he likes to do this and he he'll be this kind of player for Liverpool. I don't know what it, what he'll do, but I've seen people say that he, he profiles similarly to a little bit of Thiago, but a bit more defensive maybe mm-hmm. in terms of the way he plays. So that's not a bad thing if if it, if it comes off the way it is, and it's a loan deal, which means that the risk is reduced. So you're not you're not given. Ruben Neves or Yori Tillemans £150,000 a week when you're not convinced that they're right, they're right for your club yeah. should we go to the negatives oh sorry the Bra- yeah, we'll also say he should be able to settle in because there's a few Brazilians at the club Yeah. so pro- I'm guessing he's played with at least two of them like probably all of them at, at the national team um, so that would you would hope would make that a little bit easier the acclimatisation he's not coming into a completely sort of alien world um, the negative he hasn't played much football mm-hmm. since, hasn't played any football this season which means he won't be match fit uh, you know how, how quickly will he be starting games we don't know he's had a few injury problems <laughs> should fit in quite well at Liverpool um, <laughs> both Juventus and Barcelona have signed him both Juventus and Barcelona have got rid of him what does that tell you we don't know Um how much scar tissue has he got from his last visit to Anfield when he came he was on the pitch when Barca were beaten 4-0 um, I don't think that'll be a big deal but and also I'm guessing he's been available all summer given that he hasn't featured for Juventus yeah yeah, he wasn't on the pre-season tour he hasn't been in the squad for the Serie A I've seen him linked with a lot of clubs reportedly so, he, he's been getting, and this is just mutterings on the great vine but like he's been getting offered round all kinds apparently Everton but he was offered to Everton as well and most of them have turned them down I mean yeah. that's that's the thing it's fine I mean this is what happens when you want to, when you just need a body in midfield and to your point if you're going to get a body in midfield a 26 year old Brazilian international who's played for Barcelona Juventus you can do far worse I would imagine yeah. um, but this isn't going to be the this is not the set pulse is racing. This is Liverpool's next evolution of midfield by any by any. No, stretch. it's not. Um, but I don't think they were going to do that. Really, you know. I mean, I, I know that maybe Conrad Lima from from Leipzig, who Liverpool, I think, definitely would have pushed the button on as a short, you know, a, a short and long term sort of, or short and medium term 
solution. I'm not sure he would have got pulses racing. I think people might have said he's a good, good little signing, but yeah. I don't. You know, wasn't one of them where you go right. We're, we're going to win the league now, or you know, like that's the Champions League done and dusted. I don't think Liverpool were going to make that sign, and it, well, it just wasn't wasn't on the agenda. You could, yeah, can explain it multiple times. Why not? You know, the players aren't available that, that, that we want. Um, what it does do is it takes some pressure off a few players, doesn't it? You know, it takes a, it stops. Harvey Elliott having to play every single game, it means you can take Fabinho off in games. It means you don't have to rush Thiago back necessarily straight into the starting lineup. It means that you can take James Milner off after an hour safely, or you can put him at right back and you can bring on a midfielder that you know, that kind of way. He's got to stay fit. Hopefully, he'll settle and play some good football. But it's it's sort of the position Liverpool have put themselves in by not not sort of really really pushing the boat out earlier on in the summer and Jürgen sort of admitting he was wrong to, yeah maybe had too much faith in in the fitness and and form of some of his other midfielders uh, and he, he sort of admitted on Tuesday didn't he that maybe a bit too loyal to some players as well that you know he said if a player comes to me and says I want to leave with one or two years left on the contract then we'll deal with it he said but we're not going to push people out and Alex Oxley Chamberlain sort of I think that fits into the yeah. I think I think it's not ridiculous to think that he was referring to him. Maybe Cater. Um probably less likely to be Cater than, than Ox, but you think could Liverpool have just been ruthless and said, No, Alex, you know, thanks for everything, but we're gonna we're gonna try and upgrade you this summer. They didn't, and that's what they've left themselves with now. They've left themselves with a an imperfect solution, but at least an effort at a solution. it's it feels to me more like He's the kind of player who's going to be more useful in what he do, what he gives to the other players in the squad and to the times on the pitch, you know, because he, he's far more of a defensive midfielder than Thiago Alcantara is and, the, and Naby Keita is and Curtis Jones is. So you can't see that he's going to be a natural plug-in for the left, left of the midfield today. If they're evolving towards Harvey Elliott, Tight players on the right hand side of the midfield, then you can see that. And I wonder whether, you know, again, there's rumours that it's uh, the Henderson thing is the kind of it's like, well, we've got no, no more, no more messing around, right? That 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 makes that make that made it a no brainer of a deal because you'd actually just need to get someone. It's just a Fabinho thing for, for me because Liverpool are a little short in DM covered anyway. And because of what Milner is required to do, we're short of right back cover, and we're short of right back cover because we're also short of centre half cover. So Gomez can't play <laughs> right back, and Milner can't play right back because he's playing in midfield. And what he might find he is realistically is probably just a thirty minute, thirty minutes, twenty five minutes, fifteen minutes here and there. Maybe the Champions League might suit him a little bit better, you know, in the short in the short term. Possibly, and look, maybe he's an in-game four-two-three-one at where you just go and you go. Well, two two sort of solid players, and we we'll go four four forwards, and the fullbacks fly on, and we and we you know we try and do it that way. Um, I mean, what I would say is, I wrote this last night, but you're not getting Harvey Elliott out of this team at the moment, mm-hmm. the way he's playing. So get him in. But Fabinho's form, I also wrote this. I think it's a big concern, and I, I think him and Henderson are the two that you, you look at and go, "Well, right, what's going on?" You know, for, yeah. I thought Fabinho was really poor last night. Um, looked rattled, looked leggy, lethargic, same as Henderson, not having the same impact that he he can have and you, you want him to have. And that's maybe, only going to be exacerbated g- without, without without. Yeah, Henderson I mean, that. he was left out of at Old Trafford. Fabinho, I I'm not sure. I'm not sure why. I, I I suspect the feeling was that he, he didn't fancy him to do 90 and they fancy them more to come off the bench and hopefully the game would be in the balance. Now you've got the odd, hopefully you've got the other alternative where you say, well, he can start this and we, we'll get, we can get the game sort of in a good position and we can bring on an experienced cover for him. Um, but yeah, I, look, it's not, you can't, you can't sit there and sell this and go brilliant, superb recruitment again for Liverpool. They've nailed another one, you know, yeah. It, they, they haven't, you know, they, as of yesterday. I wouldn't say they, they would. They would no intention of signing Arthur Mello yesterday, but I don't think it was sort of. It was the let's let's get this done. Um, I think Henderson's probably just a bit like when was it Matip done his his ankle at yeah. Tottenham, wasn't it? And he, it was like right, we can't hide from this any longer. Really, it's got something's got to give. Should we bring that fella who was 
bugging us early in the summer and we'll, we'll get that deal done. It feels like there's a lot, that, that situation, the, the centre-back situation is probably why they've gone, right, because they, they recognise it at least, because, you know, you said before, they, they talked about the updates, Curtis Jones is back on the bench, there the, the, would have been a little sense of, OK, this, this is actually on the way to improving, not that Liverpool still don't need someone, but it's like, well, we feel like we can firefight. If Curtis Jones is coming back and Thiago's another couple of weeks away, yeah. we can get through this. But the second Jordan Henderson goes down, it's like, well, you just, yeah, you're being stupid to not get someone, just a physical person in the in the door, just in case. No, I agree. I agree. I mean, we've, we've talked about it many times, and we like, I've all, I've always felt Liverpool needed a midfielder. I've never felt they needed Arthur Mello. You know, I don't. I don't I would be amazed if any, even of the club legends or, or club captains, have mentioned his name. Sure. Um, we'll do some trolling after the, after the <laughs> yeah, show. Yeah, yeah. But um, they've gone, they've gone with a player that they they must see something in him enough that they think he can fit in and he can, you know, he can make some kind of impact. I think what works in his favour is there'll be plenty of games for him to to do that, and you know, we'll see what he does. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's something, I mean, transfers are always better than no transfers, something to talk about, something to get involved. I'm, I'm interested to see what he can what he can do on the pitch. It's just, yeah, I did. I got three minutes into a five-minute compilation video, and for a start, the music's always horrendous in those things. Um, but there was nothing there other than him. He just looks like a, he looks like a tidy, a tidy, capable footballer. I've seen a few people, you know, I've seen, as I said, I saw a couple of people saying he, he profiles quite similar. I think James Knowlton, I don't know if you saw it, he shared like a sort of a passing breakdown. He was quite high, percentile, he was quite high in, in a lot of categories. But I saw another, another, you know, Juventus sort of leaning people saying he was never physically up to it at Juventus, which is, you know, that's a bit of a, okay, let's, <laughs> let's skip over that one. Um, but we won't know until he's, he puts the shirt on. You know, I've, I've Liverpool have signed players before that I've thought are nailed on successes, and they've not turned out to be. They've signed players where I've gone, oh, well, what, what, what's the point of that? You know, Andy Robertson, sorry. Yeah. You know, and and you see him in the shirt, and you go, ah, okay, I see it. See that hundred percent. I wasn't, I wasn't hundred percent sure about Luis Diaz when he signed. I thought, okay, yeah, and one one sort of sub outing against Cardiff, and you're thinking. <laughs> I'll shut up. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, that's hopefully this is like a, repeating the Mascherano trick all over again. Like you're in getting a guy. No, no one sees the value him. We bring him in, make him yeah. feel loved, and he uh, and he that's fits. It. Yeah, we're, we're Juventus and Barca to fail, Liverpool succeed. But you know, it's a it's a short term option in terms of. I mean, short term ten months, but there's no there's no sort of obligation to buy. It's very much a, a to have a look and see. You know, I, I would I wouldn't be sort of putting any money on the idea that Liverpool are going to be like right two weeks in we're, we're having him it, but at least he plugs a gap until bigger solutions are found I mean if nothing else and obviously Klopp admitted this last week it certainly speaks to whether, or, 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 taking aside Jordan Henderson's injury that they recognise that they were looking for for another for at least another person at, you know throughout this summer and we knew this because the, the two main thing was there and I get out with the end club kind of corroborating that himself but it's it says to me that I don't know, maybe, maybe it's just me being overconfident on it. I would suspect they've got some, they probably have got someone lined up, someone they really, they really like or they really want. And we've all got our suspicions who were to be, and Henry Winter may or may, or may not have accidentally uh, <laughs> I, revealed. I, I, I enjoyed that. Yeah. I enjoy, I was, them, all right. I'm okay. Looking for, he's looking forward to watching Jude Bellingham at Liverpool next yeah. season. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, this does feel like yeah, Liverpool know full well they need more midfielders. They do know full well that Arthur Mello's not was not the, the the plan by any stretch. But it does maybe speak to they're, they're reasonably confident that they, they'd, they're saving that money because they know there's, they, there's someone they really want. There's a to bit of a on. parallel you can draw with Canate, isn't it? As well in the January where yeah. it was easy to look at Canate signing and nothing signed in May. Well, when you just get him in January, well, he wasn't available. We, you know, we weren't going to just go and spend another thirty million on someone we didn't want as much as Canate, and yeah, so possibly, probably, they've got a lot of work to do midfield-wise over the next twelve months. Regardless, even whether they sign Arthur, whether they sign, you know, anyone today. If you enjoyed Jano Insight, then check out the full show each and every week in video and in podcast form in your native podcasting app over on redmenplus.com. That, and also if you want to know more about Arthur Miller, I also chatted to Andy Brassel, European football expert, to get the lowdown stylistically on how he's going to fit in with the mighty Reds. Check that out also on redmenplus.com.
Hey guys, hope you enjoyed that show. Did you know Red Men Plus subscribers get access to their exclusive Facebook group? Yes, there is a Red Men Plus subscribers group on Facebook just for them. So if you want to get involved with like-minded Reds and avoid the idiots on Twitter and normal Facebook and all that, yeah, sign up to Red Men Plus, enter your username as you sign up to the Facebook group, and you'll get access to... Ta-da.